the interview, I'm Kim Min Jung. It is the season to be jolly and to spend time with family and friends. And there's an artist in town whose works primarily focus on the theme of love and friendship. Today, we'll be sitting down with Spanish artist Eva Ermisen. So stay with us. Simple curves, vivid colors, and delightful contrast with pastel colors. These paintings feel like a warm, comforting embrace from a complete stranger. They are the works of Eva Ermisen, a Spanish artist who's risen to international stardom with her unique style. Korea is no exception, and Eva too has a special love for Korea. She is particularly interested in Henya, female divers who dive in the sea without an oxygen tank to collect shellfish. So much so that she went out to hear the stories herself before illustrating the children's book Mom is Henya. The new solo exhibition in Seoul is expected to be the largest display of her works to this date. You'll be able to see over 150 pieces all the way from her early works to the latest. Her talent is to capture mundane everyday scenes and turn them into something special. There's bound to be something you share with them regardless of your age. A painter of happiness from Spain, the interview meets Eva Aramisen to discuss life and happiness in her paintings. Welcome to the interview. It's great to have you on our program. <laughs> thank, thank you so you. much for your time. Now, what brings you to Korea this time around? I know this is not your first time. No, it's not my first time, but this time I came to open the exhibition home mm. at the Hangaran Museum, mm. Seoul Art Center. Yeah, I'm here for the first days of the exhibition that is going to be running for four months. Right. And you come to Korea quite often, don't you? Yes, yes. Mm. I came first time 10 years ago already and uh, yeah, last year I'm coming four or five times a year. Four or five times a year, so yes. Korea is almost like a second home to you it by is, this point. It is, it is, yeah. And what kind of changes have you witnessed along the, over the decade that you've come? Yeah, I think a lot, really a lot, because it's really changing country. You change so fast. I mean, every time I come, like buildings are different, restaurants appear and disappear. Everything goes fast in this country, <laughs> to my standards. Uh, I don't speak Korean, so my impression is just like uh, being curious and looking, but sure. I cannot understand what's... Uh, mm. But I think also people are coming, are, are changing in the way that they're opening more to, to outside things, I mm. think. Like, uh, I can feel it really in the street with the shops, the restaurants. A lot of American things are coming in. Mm. That's my feeling, mm. right? But on the other hand, I see it's a great combination between modernity and tradition that mm -hmm. you keep really balanced to my eyes. Sure. Now, mm. tell us more about the exhibition that's happening, under uh, that's currently underway. Yeah, uh, the exhibition uh, is the biggest one I have ever done. Mm. So it was a talent and uh, it made me think uh, how I could deliver the message to the visitors. So I thought about uh, the title came to my mind uh, mm. the first, that is home. Mm. And uh, I really wanted to, to transmit my relation with painting because painting for me is like a shelter, like a home where I can go every time I need it. It's really a passionate relationship. Uh, what I have with painting. So I would like the visitor to have that idea. And it was a great opportunity because it's a huge exhibition. Mm -hmm. So um, I can explain the scenes from different points of view, different techniques. So, sure. Yeah. And on the other hand, I wanted also for the people, like the concept of home, like opening not only the living room, but the whole house mm. for the visitors to come in and to know in a more intimate way my work. Sure. Now, you took part in a signing event earlier in the morning. How was it interacting with the Korean fans, especially small children? It's always really nice. Mm. It's always really nice. I'm moving uh, because in a way it's like a, I paint to fix emotions. When something moves me, I need to write or to 
to paint about it. I see. And uh, when people come and explain um, how they felt or how they, they got also that emotion, or maybe a different one, but that they got connected with the paintings, it's like a circle closes. Mm. And uh, it makes me feel really, really happy. And, uh, and yeah, because I have found uh, in my work my, my passion and I can communicate through it. Sure. So it's really great. Mm. And Koreans are really grateful. You, you share a lot with us. <laughs> With me and Les, so I'm, I'm, sure. I'm really pleased. We can get quite emotional as well. And we yeah. have well, one of the interviewees that uh, we interviewed got pretty emotional after seeing your exhibition. How does that make you feel when you see someone who's just visited your exhibition get uh, very emotional and in touch with her emotions? Uh, yeah, it makes me connect with with the first moment before painting, you know, because I feel in a way the same. Mm. So it's so beautiful. And for me nowadays is the most important thing. Mm. I mean, uh, to communicate so deeply and to move things in the viewer that can be so important for them, that's the best thing that can happen mm. to me. <laughs> The Hangaram Art Museum at the Seoul Art Center is one of the most prestigious art institutions in Korea. It's only the first day of the new exhibition, Home by Eva Armisen, and an early weekend morning too, but there's already a wave of fans filling in the gallery. <laughs> Eva Armisen's works are known for their accessibility, lending themselves to people of all ages and interests. So it's no surprise to see lots of family visitors with children. Eva has been coming to Korea for a decade now, and to express her gratitude for the fans in Korea, she's putting up a very special event. She has offered to do individual drawings for a selected group of fans. So meeting with her fans and sharing with them have been a wonderful addition to her fond memories of Korea. So too, it has been for her fans in this country. What do you think it is about your drawings and paintings that people find so appealing and inviting? Well, it's difficult to say for mm. me, but uh, what they tell me, the feedback I get, is that they connect with um, sometimes with the childhood mm. or with um, feelings they have for the closer ones, probably with their own emotions. Uh, that sometimes it's hard, right? Mm. To, to, so I like that about Koreans, that the reactions that they, can, they feel free to show what they are feeling. Mm. Maybe we are similar with the Spanish people in that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, your drawings are quite childlike in a way, mm. and, but also very warm and inviting, like I said. I'm curious as to where you get your inspiration. Well, normally I get inspiration from really daily things, mm. uh, from my closest environment. Like uh, I can get it from conversations I hear, from the uh, careness of someone I see. Uh, anything that can move me, uh, any emotion gets the inspiration. I mean, I get inspired by, and then I write it or I draw it in a way because I use painting like to fix that and. Uh, in my fantasy, it's like when I fix it, I keep it there. <laughs> and uh, that, I think that was a reason I started painting. Mm. Your subjects are quite childlike also. Mm. Um, mm. Is there a reason why you insist on having them round faces and kind of chubby? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because it was not an intention in that. Mm. I suppose I wanted to get the most direct message and mm. I started to make it more and more simple mm. and uh, this main character, the, 
the girl that appears is the storyteller and uh, it's really autobiographical what I explained so it's kind of a diary oh. and uh, yeah she, she was not so simple drawing uh, but every time I took more elements out that uh, they were not uh, needed. Mm. Is she a reflection of you would you say? Yeah and somehow yeah yeah mm. yes. Mm. Does she have a name? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there particular colors or hues that you're attracted to? I suppose depending on the mood, on, on the times, I have been changing my palette without mm. no, no intention. I mean, but uh, it's the same as with the media, that depending on the message uh, I want to deliver, I choose the media, the mm. colors, mm. and everything comes like together. Uh, I think in the exhibition at the Hungarian Museum you can see that really clear because you see from oil and canvas paintings that uh, give a completely different sensation that when you go to see a small pencil drawing or you go to an etching mm -hmm. or you see a ceramic piece or a sculpture mm -hmm. so, or a projection. So that's really interesting for me to have all that medias to, to make a experiences and to to try and um, always it, to make the message more comprehensive. Hmm. Hmm. Now walk us through the process complete uh, process of completing your piece of art. Well it changes a lot but normally hmm. I just start like I, I said to you I just note down something hmm. and then uh, when I go to the studio um, I decide I want to make it or big or small or in one media or the other mm -hmm. and then I start and sometimes it comes really fluent and uh, it goes from start to to the end mm -hmm. at once I mean at once in, in a really sure. I mean, in a short time mm -hmm. and sometimes I need to stop and just leave it for a while resting mm -hmm. and, uh, and there is a process I'm interested in uh, that you can see it in the paintings that when you look at them there's a kind of um, uh, the whole story of the painting is behind. I never cover it totally, so because I think that uh, that's interesting also. Maybe mm. I start with one idea, but things are happening and life uh, goes on. So sure. things happen, and then I want to change, and I like the painting to breathe the whole history it has. Sure. So you do paintings, um, etching, as well as sculptures. So what do these uh, different medium of art mean to you, and how do you go about mm. choosing them? I started doing uh, painting and drawing, mm -hmm. uh, but then I had like the feeling I wanted to try with ceramics. I wanted, and it was like a, depends on the message I want to deliver. But for example, with ceramics, I started to work when uh, I have a theme that I wanted to talk about the the fragility about the relations between the people, mm -hmm. and I found that ceramic was the the best uh, medium to talk about something that is always about to break mm. so I made an installation of a different of a lot of different plates that were explaining the stories and I found that that was the media that could work mm. and with the sculptures I had always the dream to make the 3D my characters alive mm. I had done some small things with the sculptures but I was working for a, for a Korean company for three years doing the, um, the Christmas decoration in, uh, in Dondemun and then I had the opportunity to build these huge sculptures and, uh, and I found it fantastic because it's kind of, a, they, they have a different life when they are 3D mm. and, uh, and they work like, a, the impression is completely different. So since then I have been working with the sculptures and I have also, for example, the, the paper and uh, when I draw with pencil, when I want to explain like, uh, secrets or intimate things, I find the pencil and the paper much better media than mm. maybe a big uh, canvas. Sure. Another thing that I found really interesting and important is to bring art to unexpected places mm. and then people interact and suddenly the, you get a really good response because I think that we all have this sensitivity but sometimes I don't know, you don't have the opportunity, you don't see the thing. So in my experience, when I put the sculptures in the street and a lot of people stop and mm -hmm. uh, took photographs or just look to them and, and got I into the art that way and then they discover other things. So that's another way of arriving to, to the viewers. Mm. Now, 
Tell us about the people in your work. Mm -hmm. Now, are they modeled after any significant figures in your life? Well, sometimes a family appears often because family to me is like a mini society where I can explain really clearly all the feelings or most of them um, and uh, the relation between the members can be um, really relaxed in an atmosphere that they can uh, love and laugh and uh, explain secrets and that is really inspiring to me. So a, a lot of groups of my paintings are families that mm. move together mm. or they have like a I think it's unique, the relation you have with your mom, for sure, your dad, your sister and brother, and most of the more intense uh, feelings and relationships are there, and it's, it's really useful for me uh, sure. to explain. Sure. And your subjects are always in a happy mood. It mm -hmm. looks like they're always smiling mm -hmm. and um, grinning also. Why is that? Uh, I have the impression that we are getting all the information always in a way to make us feel small and uh, unafraid. And we get plenty of bad news the whole day. Of course they are, I mean I'm not, not uh, saying not, but there is also another point of view. Um, as an artist I want to, to make it bigger, that you also can change your perspective. You can see almost everything from different sides, right? Mm. I try to be uh, like that side that gives, uh, uh, sees always like a little door or a little window where you can just go. I focus on that uh, positive perspective. Mm. Sometimes I look at them and think maybe they're Asians. <laughs> yeah, they tell me a lot that. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. they have any specific ethnicity per se? No, that came like that, but it's mm. true that they have, now that I'm working so much in Asia, <laughs> I can see that there is a yeah, similar, yeah, yeah, but it's not intention. It's, it's not kind intentional. Of, yes. What yeah. does themes of family and friends and love and friendship mean to you and how do you want to convey that to the viewers? Well, there are a lot of uh, themes in my pa I mean, in my paintings. It can be the family that explains uh, relations between, uh, yeah, between humans. Nature is also present there uh, mm. strongly because it's also a thing that I'm surrounded. It comes, but everything that happens. Since I'm coming to Korea, uh, like some landscapes and some food, some things are becoming part of my daily life mm. also, mm. and they start appearing in my paintings in a natural way. Mm. So it's like an open diary that everything can come and everything can be nice to explain. Something tells me you had a very happy childhood, is that? I did, yes. I did. Tell me a little bit about your family. Well, my family, I have uh, one sister mm. that is here with me. <laughs> I'm so lucky that I worked with her for already more than 15 years. Wow. She helps me in everything and she's my manager, so we move from one place to the other. So it's really nice that we can spend time together and uh, it, it makes everything easier. And my parents, they were always very, very supportive, always. Mm. So mm. Uh, when I said I wanted to be a painter, I never heard like, oh, that's going to be so difficult. No, okay, go for it, you, you will do it okay. And, wow. Yeah, now that I'm a mom and I see how difficult it is to be so generous and, and so confident. Mm. But they were, they definitely were. And uh, I had to move when I was 17 from my, my city. I was born in Zaragoza, mm. which is between Madrid and Barcelona. Mm. I decided I wanted to go to Barcelona because there was no university in my city. So they support me with that one. And uh, I went there and uh, yeah, and since then I'm living uh, in Barcelona, mm. in surroundings. Mm. Now, some works depict the woman in solitude as well. Yes. Um, do you find yourself in any of these works? Of course, yeah. yeah. Mm. I really like to be alone. <laughs> okay. I'm the kind of person that can be really happy when he's alone. Mm. And, uh, I have plenty of things I like to do and uh, I try to keep my space to do that mm -hmm. and uh, my work is really related with that because mm -hmm. I enjoy so much what I do. Yes, uh, and I think it's really nice to be okay being alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's maybe, it's hard. I don't know why, I, personally I don't have that feeling but for a lot of people maybe to be alone is difficult. In my case to be alone is, uh, 
is a need some time of the, some part of the day mm -hmm. uh, I need to yes yeah I love it uh, when I wake up in where I live the first thing I do is drive my my kids to to school mm. and then after that I go with my dog to walk in and that's one of the part of the day I really like the most mm. I think about what I will do and uh, I like the, the the atmosphere of where I live which is in the middle of nature and um, yeah yeah so a lot of paintings talk about not solitude I mean but being well okay alone mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. right it's important what you bring up because I mean, of course, being in a family is important, but finding yourself alone and finding that your own space is important of course, too, right? It as is. a working mother, how do you ensure to do that? I think a lot of women might want to know. Well, yeah, it's really, I mean, it's not easy to combine everything. Every, I mean, everybody knows. But um, I think I wouldn't be good in anything if I wouldn't have my if I couldn't paint if I couldn't have my time so I wouldn't be a good mom I wouldn't be good I need that mm -hmm. and then I have been like uh, finding my space for for combining everything and of course finding help to do it because I'm not a superwoman mm -hmm. so like everybody but I, I learned one one of the things I learned from my parents and I'm trying to to tell to my children is that it's really important to be independent no matter if you're a woman or a man, of course. Mm. So independent gives you the, the strength to decide what you want to do and what, what, what you want to do with your time also. So. Mm. Emotionally independent and financially of course. independent. Mm. Anyway, in, in any in, way. independent in the, I mean, sure. every aspect. Mm. I think it's, yeah, it gives you freedom. Sure. Mm. What do you value the most in life and how do you make sure to reflect those values in your work? I was so lucky that mm -hmm. um, in the part, I mean, I got a lot of things from Korea, mm -hmm. a lot of important things in my life. But one of the most that I have more, I mean, more deep in me was to meet the Hanyu in Jeju. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when I had the opportunity to go there, I learned that the values, the most important for me, mm -hmm. uh, they show me in a really natural way. So one of them is independence. They're strongly, fiercely independent women. Mm. Another one is being proud of what you do because they are really like a, yeah, they, they are satisfied. Sure. Even when it's a big effort, even when they are risking their lives, they feel really like they are mm. in their place. Mm. Another one, every time more important, is to respect uh, nature and uh, to have a relationship, uh, being conscious that we are not the only ones here, that a lot of people come after us, luckily. Mm. So, uh, the relation they have of respect with uh, with the sea, how how they talk to the sea like a like something alive that they have to take care of because they're getting so much from it and they want to to give back also things right. Sure. And another thing, it's um, the community how they defend each other, how mm. they protect each other, how how they share everything mm. and when they go with the groups and you have this leader, how they listen and, and at the end how they laugh and how, because I had the feeling that they were happy. Mm. I mean, and, and I came back from there thinking that that are the most important values to me. Wow, yeah, mm. that was quite a learning experience oh, for yeah. you. Oh yeah, really moving and mm. really I'm not gonna forget it, yeah, oh, for sure. Wow. Is there a message that you want the viewers to take away from this specific exhibition, the largest ever you've put together this time? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think when people that look to the paintings or to the artworks uh, gets moved and they just let, like, relax and, mm. and connect with a part of uh, what they are, that's it's more than, than enough. I mean, sometimes I paint uh, trying to deliver a message not to deliver because I'm not trying to deliver anything but I explain a story mm. but what the viewer catch is different because what is really beautiful about art is that you look to it and and what you get is a, is a combination of what you see and what you have inside so mm. you make your own mix mm. and that is the, the most wonderful thing and when the mix makes you think makes you think that you can change things that you don't like or whatever 
that's really great. Mm, so every visitor can take his or her experience. Of, her absolutely, emotions. absolutely, mm. and all of them different. I'm sure. Sure. Now you've also drawn about your experiences here in Korea, so I want to know what does Korea mean to you? How does it inspire you? Uh, it has inspired me in many ways, but it means a lot because since I came the first time, I was so welcomed here and I felt so, so well. Mm -hmm. It was a surprise because to tell you the truth, uh, I had no idea about Korea when mm. I came the first time. Mm. I had this uh, world wall for my children for <laughs> geography lessons, so I have to look exactly where I was going and so okay, wow, such a long <laughs> trip. So, so everything was uh, amazing to me, surprising culturally. And, um, but the, the thing that I felt the first time, I still feel now that you are the best host. I mean, I feel mm. really like a, mm. you're proud of your culture and you want to share it. Mm. which is really nice mm. and it's such a rich culture right mm. now you've also drawn about the the scenery and also some food i see i see yes, some kimchi yes, over yeah, there yeah, <laughs> yeah i love it tell us about some of the experiences that uh, you've gone through that inspired you to put them into onto campus in the beginning it was really a uh, wow challenging to me <laughs> but it has kind of an addictive thing that mm, sure. uh, every time when i'm in spain i'm dreaming about eating uh, cold noodles here <laughs> or bulgogi or going to barbecue i love the kimchi now i can't find some in spain mm, but mm, mm. like five years ago it was really hard mm. so now korean things are arriving every time more to spain but sure. Uh, I also like a lot um, the way you, I mean, to me Seoul is a city that when you come the first time is not really impressive like uh, it can be Paris or like lighting or no. Sure. You go discovering bit by bit and is everything amazing. The yeah. architecture is amazing to me, the mm. traditional and the modern one. Sure. The way you are in a taxi and you just go passing the buildings and every building is different mm. and it has like a really risky proposals here, mm. a lot of uh, great architectures working here. It happens the same to me with fashion, I see how Koreans design, or even that you have a specific thing for everything you do, like uh, you are on a table and then you see all the plates and all the things are really well thought for the thing you are eating, <laughs> right? And uh, I love that. I mm. love that. All the side dishes, the yeah, millions. Exactly, <laughs> millions. And it's quite similar to Spanish tapas maybe, mm. that you get little pieces of fat. That is true. Yeah. 
But Korean, sta Korean tables are really spectacular. <laughs> I love them. Visually, they're so beautiful. Mm. Mm. I know you also visited the Jeju Island and uh, you ended up in the remote island of Udo <laughs> Island. <Yes. laughs> now, this is somewhere that even Koreans don't know much about. Tell us about how you ended up there. Well, it's really nice story because I was working in uh, in Shanghai, mm. and then I went to the hotel at night, and I saw this magazine, a tourist magazine, and I saw the photos of the Hanyu, mm. and I couldn't believe it. I mean, I thought, what's what are these women? Like, they were like uh, animals to mm. me, like mm. uh, wild animals, and I, I started reading uh, the. The, the, the article mm -hmm. and I told to my sister next time we go to Korea I want to see these these ladies mm. working in the mm. sea mm. so we traveled to Jeju I think first time four years ago and uh, I saw them uh, we were doing the Ole and and I saw them from far but I start drawing sketches and simple drawings and it happened that I had an interview for the Jeju newspaper and mm -hmm. they published that drawings so I came, I went back to Spain, and two months later, I got an email from Hyun Ko, the film director, mm -hmm. that she had seen the drawings, and, uh, that she got a special feeling about them, and she wanted me to help her to promote her documentary, mm. uh, Breathing Underwater, right. and, uh, and if I was interested. And I said, of course, I'm mm. really interested, and I would love. I saw the, the documentary, and I found it amazing. And moving, and I, I, yeah, I could know more about Ehanyo uh, seeing that. Right. So I came here, and we made the, they made the premiere, and I was here, and then she told me, would you like to come to Udo, and uh, I will introduce uh, <laughs> the ladies I have been filming for seven years, so they were kind of her family, and I found it, uh, yeah, an opportunity to know them so close. Mm. So we traveled to Jeju, we took the ferry to Udo, <laughs> and then we were there like for three, four days with them. Mm. And uh, yeah, seeing them going to dive every day and uh, sharing their houses. And it was really amazing to me mm. to see them. And then she told me, would you like to illustrate a book about them? I'm writing a story that I want to to explain how greed can uh, be so dangerous and how too much ambition can make you, be, I mean, can destroy you. Mm. And I think Hanyo can explain that really well. Right. And this book is called uh, Mom is it's Hanyo. Hanyo. Right. Yes. And you took part in drawing the Hanyos. And I'm sure it was challenging for you to also depict that strong independency and that strong energy that they have into your drawings. Yeah. Was it challenging at all for you to turn that energy into hmm. a still image? Well, for me, I think I, I felt the responsibility really of, uh, of sharing that, um, that a strong feeling I got from them of truth. You know, there were nothing was there to impress anybody. Hmm. So that nowadays is really unique to find such a thing. And the fact that we were sharing their houses and uh, they are living in such a humble uh, places mm -hmm. and they share everything. And so when I started to, to think about the book, there were like two things I was kind of obsessed. One, it was to transmit that strength mm -hmm. they have. And the other one was that the sea had to be like, a, one of the main characters of the book. So mm -hmm. to find the color of Jeju C was like a <laughs> <laughs> I had a hard time to to be convinced that I was doing it okay. So I, in my studio I have like two levels and then I empty the 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 up level just for concentrating on on the Jeju. Oh, wow. I had a lot of photos of them and uh, some objects they gave me and my memories mm -hmm. and uh, I start just yes, drawing the book. And uh, it happened at the end that the sea is, the book talks about three generations of Hanyu. Mm. So the story is really beautiful how the grandma teaches the mom mm. and the mom, uh, well, this little girl that is uh, still doesn't dive, mm. is wondering a lot of things of why the, the grandma and the mom are doing such a things of risking their lives sure. when they could uh, die with, uh, with uh, an oxygen, right? And, uh, and that, that relation between the three generations of women 
it, it's so interesting because to me they transmit everything and they keep them really, really tight mm. to each other. Sure. Because it's not only to teach how to dive, but it's to teach how to live and how to survive and, and a lot of things really meaningful. Mm. So I try to deliver that message also and the sea appears in all the book except in two pages that uh, the mom decides that uh, living in Jeju is not interesting and that mm. she wants to go to the big city mm. and then she travels to Seoul mm. and in that two pages there is not a sea. But I, I found really beautiful relationship what they have with the sea that they want to die there. They think there was one that says that um, when they ask her, what do you think while you are diving? Mm -hmm. She says something really beautiful to me. She said, well, you cannot think too much because you have to be really, uh, I mean, being careful for surviving. There are so many dangers, but sometimes, like uh, one day a year, the sea is really calm and clear. And then I think it's like a mom that is giving anything mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I found it really beautiful. So it was a meaningful project right, to me. I'm sure it was. What lesson, if you will, do you think everyday people like us, the non henyas of the world, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. can learn from what you've learned, what you found out about these women and uh, your experience as well? Important things are not most of the things we are worried about every day in our daily life. Mm. So. The character that inspired me, the grandmother, was a lady that appears in the documentary also. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, now she's 87, I think. I was so impressed. She was diving eight hours a day. And, <laughs> and then when she came out of the water, she was in charge of two teenagers. <laughs> but casually, they were the age of my children. Mm. I personally have like uh, all the moms, I think, uh, struggles with, uh, sure. with teenagers. Mm. But I saw her like uh, taking care of everything in such a natural way, you mm. know, that mm. I was jealous. I thought, oh, wow, <laughs> how do you do that so well? After diving for eight yeah, hours. Yeah, and, uh, and non stopping and having nothing in her house. Nothing. Mm. When I say nothing, it was nothing. I mean, they had a, a little table and the two teenagers were there and showing her respect uh, that it was the same that I was feeling for her, you mm. know? So I thought something is really working here. Mm. So maybe we make too complicated everything and we are worrying about things that they don't have any value. Mm. So you, know, like you, you have to have so many things, you have to show to the others in so many ways that at the end you forget about who you are and, and, and what is the meaningful things to you, right? Mm. In order to have everybody around you happy. Sure. So, it's yeah. very touching. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really touching, yeah. Mm. Okay, let's talk more about you now. <laughs> Tell us about your hometown, Tharagotha, if yes. I'm saying that right. Yeah, very well. <laughs> Tell us about your childhood and, and your hometown and everything about it. Well, I had a really, I don't know, happy mm. childhood. And uh, my mom is, um, she's retired already, but she's a teacher of um, uh, disabled people. Mm. And she was really passionate uh, about her work. Mm. She loved it. And I think I got also that uh, relation with work from mm. her. And my father is an uh, industrial engineer, and uh, so apparently nothing to do with art. <laughs> but they are really sensitive persons. And uh, for example, my father was has been always um, a really good reader, mm -hmm. and that um, I love to read also. And I think uh, they show me how to find in in art, in, in literature, in cinema, in any kind of art like a place where you can go when, when you are tired of the real world. Mm. And that I use really often. And we used to live, my sister is one year and a half younger than I, mm. and we are really close. The memories I have is being uh, the two of us together always, mm. playing and of getting angry and fighting. <laughs> and, uh, but they're a good relationship. Would you say you're artistically talented from a very young age? 
No, 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 not especially. I mean, no, but I was really passionate about what I did. <laughs> so, and I was really lucky that um, I had the support of my family, but also in my school there was this uh, uh, art teacher that uh, inspired me totally because I saw her like uh, the one I wanted to be. Mm. Uh, she, yeah, she teaches painting, but she was really like a, for me it was like freedom because she, in my child eyes, she did what she wanted and it was not real at all, but mm. I was seeing it like that. And she inspired me a lot because it was, our education, it was like, um, for me, the art classes were like something completely different of the rest of the subjects. Mm. We could do with her what we wanted and sure. I felt really free and in a way I got stuck to the feeling that I, I didn't want to lose it. Yeah. So I related art and painting with freedom since I was really, really little. Mm. When did you find out that this might be it for you, art, drawing and painting? I was shy when, when I was, I was a shy girl and um, I started drawing and I always have my diary, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it was easier to communicate sometimes drawing and mm. explaining the stories than talking mm. and I discovered that with painting I could do whatever I wanted. So I could invent worlds, I could, I could make reality just the size I wanted and once you discover that kind of power it's really difficult to to let it go. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you went to the University of Barcelona, you have a degree in arts. You yes. Know. When did you get your big break, if there is such a, mom a moment in your life? Well, I was lucky, really lucky when I, I finished my studies, uh, as everybody I think that finishes university, I'm more in an art area, mm. I really didn't know what to do <laughs> because I went to lessons and I finished everything and I thought, wow, and now what? And then I just went for a master degree because actually I really didn't know what to do. <laughs> but then uh, there was a, a winery in Spain that gave a grant to Ooh. an artist and it was kind of context that you could uh, participate and my mom why don't you participate on this one? I, I really didn't trust at all I could get anything, but I won that context and then I got money to be painting for one year. Wow. And that ended in an exhibition. So that made really a break in my, because I saw I could, I could make it and I had the time of being working just painting for one year mm -hmm. when I was really young. And the exhibition uh, at the end was an, a success and then, yeah, it started like that way. Sure. Who are some of the artists who influenced you the most? I think Picasso was like a the master. Mm. And still, I'm, I mean, it's overwhelming what, what he's able to do, no? But we have in Spain really amazing artists in all the history of art. Sure. So I was also really impressed when I, I could, I had the chance to see alive the Goya paintings. Mm. Uh, that made me think that in that time uh, he was such a revolutionary painting and he could paint without having any detail and everything was so alive and I, I, I was trying to <laughs> imitate that with no <laughs> success but, but they were a stimul to me. And then after uh, I got really impressed also by the expressionist, uh, German expressionist and in a time I was painting really dark paintings and really strong. Um, I was also mm, really interested in the etching area because mm. when I finished the study I, I asked in university to follow with the uh, etching and edition works to learn and that was another experience because the craftsmanship was there really, you need to learn a lot of things about uh, the technique mm. that um, to get what you wanted because when you paint or you draw it's something like really direct but with etching a lot of things have to happen before you see the image mm. at the end mm. and all that process inspired me also a lot and made me go to look for uh, Picasso etchings which are gorgeous and then you discover also a different part of the um, of the artist. Mm. Uh, the artists I admire the most have a lot of uh, different techniques they use really well. Mm. Miro is one of the others that I really love and that one it cost me more time to understand mm. because actually it seems really simple but I think what he controls about 
color and about composition is something extraordinary. And he had also this, uh, this etching part that really moved me and influenced me, for sure. Mm. Now you've become a successful artist yourself. Now, wow. <laughs> <laughs> How much of your success do you attribute to talent, efforts and pure luck? Oof. I would say that uh, effort and uh, insistence is the most important. Mm, so just persevering, no, yeah. not giving up? Not giving up. Mm. Have, because you can moments? have all the talent of the world, but if you give up... I mean, I think in every... in probably in everything in life, but in art is really hard, mm. uh, especially to, to, to find your way, to find your language, and, uh, and then to find your public also, to your audience. So uh, it doesn't mean anything that nobody understands what you do in one place and at one point of your life, in my opinion, of mm -hmm. course. But when you insist, and it's also a matter of confidence and uh, a combination. But I think that uh, to be there every day uh, trying is basic to get anything in mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Were there moments you wanted to give up in your career? It's difficult when you have to show your work to someone to convince that that work uh, is okay when you are the one that, you, that has done it, right? Mm -hmm. It's really violent and difficult. And in that point, uh, I had to make a, the biggest effort to show my work and to defend the work in, in the eyes of the others. I see. But I was really, really confident that I loved painting and that I wanted to do that as a main thing in my life, working. Mm. So I tried, I tried, and probably I have been also lucky of finding the people. I think it's also really important to have around you people that can make you feel confident and happy uh, to work in what you do. Mm -hmm. So in that, I have been really lucky. I have chosen really well the people that is making their way with me. Mm -hmm. And that for sure helps in the moments you feel like uh, more down or that you doubt about what to do. To have people that is pushing in the same direction, mm -hmm. that is basic also to work. I see. Now, how do you choose your subjects to draw? Now, uh, I'm working in so many different projects that I have a really personal part that uh, I choose the subjects, but I try to combine with uh, people with different activities. For example, I'm, uh, last time I'm illustrating uh, books a lot, and I like also to illustrate uh, thoughts of, some, of someone different and go out of my and can combine that, uh, go out of my studio and go out also of my comfort zone. Yeah, mm. yeah, and then enter in the in the world of someone else. I see. So last time I have been working for the three last years, illustrating for a cultural magazine, uh, short stories of a really nice writer in Spain, and that has opened me different perspectives also because mm. uh, of course what she writes. It's nothing to do with my point of view. And to illustrate that uh, has made also, I think, more rich the act of painting and of, of searching for different uh, materials and, mm. yeah, and ways of expressing. Mm. All your subjects and the characters in your painting, your drawings mm. are happy, but of course human lives are not just about mm. happiness and butterflies and roses. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> Now, what brings you down and how do you get over it? Well, I think the same things as uh, the rest of the people, right? Uh, you doubt about the things you do, you feel guilty about a lot of th decisions you take. Uh, all the time you have to be choosing and when you choose one thing you left the other one. And, uh, but at the end, I don't know, I think not to be in a real contradiction with yourself is the, the basis of being more or less balanced. Mm. So that's what I try. I mean, of course we are all in contradictions and there are a lot of things that make us feel insecure. And I think society makes us feel insecure in purpose because we are much more easy to manipulate and to put wherever they want. So in my little uh, world, I, I, I try to be a a little bit against that, like deciding that I don't want to get down, down, down. I mean, when you see the news, you just can't get down and not to recoup in, in years. If you think about everything they're explaining to you, sure. it's so unfair. But at the end, that's 
in a way blocks you so much that you don't do anything to get better. So I try to focus in a thing that it, I can be able to intervene. Mm. What makes you the happiest then, on the contrary? The happiest? I don't know. I don't know, I think uh, moments like I have this morning when I see the people in the exhibition, so many people and so many people telling me that they are feeling happy, mm. it, it overwhelms me, you know, it's like, mm. oh, wow, this is something I have to <laughs> do this to myself <laughs> to believe that it's happening. <laughs> uh, that makes me really happy. And also, of course, to see the people I love uh, mm. well. Sure. And, uh, mm -hmm. and enjoying and sharing. Uh, the, for this exhibition, friends from a friend from Madrid came, uh, another from Barcelona, another from New York. And when I was opening and I saw them there, I felt like, wow, this is really mm -hmm. something great sure. that you can move people to come all over the world to see some <laughs> to share something with you. I felt really grateful and mm, happy. Sure. What does family, happiness and these things mean to you? Well, it means everything. I think that we need, uh, we need the family. I mean, even to be against the family. Mm. We need that relation. They're the strongest one, the one that makes you happy or unhappy in mm. most of the times. Now, what kind of an artist do you envision to be decades down the road? I'm really happy with my actual moment. I'm not ambition and everything, anything else. I mean, just follow and uh, try to, to be honest with myself and work uh, as hard as I do and enjoy it also. Sure. Know how to enjoy all the experiences that I'm so lucky to have, right? Yeah, yeah I, I don't have any special plan for the future in that I know I'm going to be painting since I'm able to do it. I'm sure about that because I need it, but for the rest, just being uh, honest with my work and don't, don't get lost with the things that are happening. That's what I would like. Well, as we wrap up the interview, I want to know uh, some of the future plans you have for yourself. Yeah, I'm now working uh, in, uh, in two books in Spain that I just released. Uh, one is a children's book uh, that we made a theater play that I'm painting alive and there is music and so we are touring in theaters uh, now in this, this mm. next year and uh, I have an exhibition in Hong Kong and in Lisbon and in Korea uh, just like uh, three days ago I became ambassador for helping to promote the protection of the earth wow. with ECOMOM uh, so we are planning to do a lot of uh, activities in that way maybe also a book, uh, just trying to, to make us conscious of, uh, of how much we have to change, <laughs> not, not sure. to, to, to destroy the planet immediately. <laughs> yeah. Looks like you have a lot on your plate. A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. All right, well, best of luck to you and thank you so much for thank your time today. Thank you. Yeah, I have to tell you that I'm a big fan of Aria. When they told me you're going to do an interview for Aria, <laughs> I said, <saw>, wow, <laughs> I love it. Thank, thank you, you very so much for being part My of pleasure. it. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right, well, if you want to become happy, a little bit happier and come out uh, moved and fulfilled, you do want to check out this exhibition that runs until March 31st. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week.